everybody, Nick Sassoni here with Real Estate Investor Online and Real Estate Investor TV. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails lately asking me to explain the whole mortgage assignment break. Uh, emails like, is a mortgage assignment the same as a sub two deal? What's the difference? Should I be doing sub twos? Should I be doing mortgage assignments? And the answer is probably yes, yes, and yes. But I want to take a look at the time and kind of explain the difference to you a little bit. Uh, mortgage assignment is very similar to a subject to deal. It's just we're doing it differently these days. And, you know, in the old days, well, first, first let me explain what a subject to deal is or a mortgage assignment is. It's when a home is sold, a new owner comes in and buys the property, um, but the mortgage stays in the seller's name. And in the old days, they might call that an assumption. In, in, prior to the mid-70s, I could sell you my house. And you could assume the loan. You'd sign a paper, and the loan would go into your name. And I would legally not be uh, involved anymore. So if I if I sold you my house and you assumed my loan, there was no credit check. The, the loan with whatever bank just went into your name, and if you defaulted, you were the guy in trouble, not me, and I couldn't be foreclosed on. Well, obviously the banks didn't like that because people were letting deadbeats assume their loans. Uh, so they stopped that all in the mid 70s. I think 1974 or 78 is about when that stopped. Um, so that's when subject two deals became popular, at least in the creative investing circles. And a subject two deal is when I sell you the house, but I leave my name on the mortgage. And uh, a good way to explain it is when you sell a car, at least in Illinois, and I think this is the way it is in most states, when you sell a car, if there's a loan, a lien on that car. Let's say you go to a bank, you get a loan, and you buy a car. If you want to sell me that car, you have to pay off that loan before the title can transfer into my name. Well, it doesn't work that way with a house. With a property or a house or land or whatever, with any type of property, if you have a mortgage on the house and you want to sell me that house, you can sign that house over to me. You can sell me that house and leave that mortgage with your name on it on that house. And that's what it's subject to. It's known as selling a house subject to the mortgage. That's what a subject to or an assignment of mortgage is. And right now, it's one of the hottest strategies to use because there's literally millions of people out there that are very, very motivated sellers. They, I mean, houses are sitting on the MLS for a year, year and a half, and just not selling. Um, I mean, I talked to my judicial last week. She has a house that was on the MLS for a year. She wasn't able to sell it. And she was selling it cheap and we're going to help her out. But in any case, um, I get the bad hair day too. I seem to have this colic that I can't get rid of. It's like a late in life colic too. Um, so I'm going to be looking at my hair. So I'll sit like this, look out of the corner of my eye. Anyway, um, but right now, since there's so many millions of motivated sellers out there, it's a great time to be doing mortgage assignment. The other reason is there's so many people, again, literally another group of millions of people out there who can't get a mortgage right now. More, the lenders have tightened up so much. It's so hard to get a mortgage. You need huge down payments. You need a great credit score. And there's a lot of people, literally millions of them out there, that would do anything to, to get a home right now and, and, and that they can buy on their own. And good people, people that have some decent down payment money, but maybe not 20%, that have fair credit scores, but maybe not the 720 or whatever it is that banks are asking for these days. So today's market has opened up. It, it just opened the doors for you and me to make a lot of money doing mortgage assignment. So what's the difference between a subject to deal and a mortgage assignment? Well, a mortgage assignment and a subject to are very similar. The only difference is the way that we transact the deal as investors. In the old days, I would buy the house from you subject to the mortgage. So you sell me the house, I now own the house, but you leave your mortgage on it. And I would make the mortgage payment to your bank every month. Um, and then I would rent the house out. I would find somebody that wanted to lease the house from me with an option to buy. So you sell it to me. I bring in a tenant buyer. That tenant buyer would give me four or five grand, maybe a little more up front when they moved in. So I'd make five or six or eight or ten grand up front. And then I would collect rent from them for a year or two until they were ready to buy. When they were ready to buy, they'd buy the house from me. And that's when I would make a bigger chunk of cash. The difference between what I owed you on the house and how much the house was worth. Now what we're doing, and it, like I said, it's a little bit semantics, but we're calling it a mortgage assignment because I go, I still do go in as the investor, sign the contract to buy the house subject to the mortgage, 
But instead of me taking possession of the house and being responsible to you on that loan or to the bank on that loan uh, and ownership, I just assigned my ownership, my, my equity. I assigned the contract to a new buyer. So instead of me renting it to some guy, that person comes in and instead of his money being an option deposit, it's a down payment, legally it's an assignment fee, and I still make my same five or eight or ten grand up front, but he literally owns the house. And the cool thing is, it's a lot easier to get 10 or 12 or 15 grand from somebody if they're legally going to own the house when they close, instead of telling them, well, you're going to own the house down the road, you're just going to rent it for now. It was the turn to get somebody to give you 10 grand, then they just rent the house, right? But now they're going to legally own the house, literally own the house. There's a closing, they own it, their name's on the deed. It's a lot easier for you, for you to make bigger chunks of money up front as the investor putting the deal together. So that's, that's pretty much what an assignment of mortgage is. Uh, you find somebody that wants to buy the house, there's plenty of them out there. You find somebody that's a motivated seller that needs to sell the house quickly, you bring the two of them together, you assign your, you, like I said before, to make it legal, you sign a contract to buy, and you assign that contract to the guy that moves in. And it's just really, really, really a great deal. Now, you still might want to cherry pick a little bit. When you find a deal that is in a good neighborhood, and it's the right house, you still might want to buy that house, close on it yourself as an investor, and then rent it out over the long term and help yourself build the long term well. So really, there's not a too big of a difference, though, between a sub two and an assignment of mortgages, except the sub two is the way we, it's just what we used to call it. We, we would hold long term responsibility as an investor. And I said, well, I got burned a lot of times. So when I say burned, I just had, some houses I had to evict two and three tenants, and when, when you're evicting one, you're paying the mortgage, and then after you get them out, you got to fix the house up, and then you got to market and find a new tenant, and all that while you're making those mortgage payments. Now, if you make your money up front, you make it clean, you make it quick, and you move on. Um, and now the way we're doing it even, and, and this I learned, Phil Grove taught me this uh, in his mortgage assignment program, uh, there's a lend, not a lender, a, a, not a realtor, spit it out. Oh, mo oh no, uh, lawyers! Gosh, how can I forget lawyers? I should... uh, there's a, a attorney firm that closes these things nationwide now, and they even notify the bank that ownership is changing hands. And it's all done so clean and so professional and so sweet. And still provides all that with the program. Anyhow, um, these are the same clients. And so if, if you're doing some twos, you might want to consider just assigning these and getting in and getting out and getting paid, right? If you're doing lease option flips, and that's a big buzzword in the company now, and, and not in the company, in the industry right now, is lease option flips, where you find somebody that has a house that they're going to do a rent to own or a lease with an option to buy. And um, same thing, you get a contract, but instead of you getting a contract to buy it subject to the mortgage, you get a contract to lease it from that seller with an option to buy. Then you find somebody else that wants that same house. They want to lease it with an option to buy it themselves, and you just assign your contract to them. You should be doing both. So if you're doing at least option flips, and if you're not sure on any of this, send me an email, and I'll, I'll help clarify it. Or go to our forums at realestateinvestoronline.com forward slash forum, F-O-R-U-M, and ask there, and I'll go into more detail. But if you're doing lease option flips, or if you're doing mortgage assignments, you should be doing both. Because while you're marketing, let's face it, you spend a lot of money on marketing, you don't want to waste it. You're going to find some people who are renting but would rather sell. And you're going to find some people who would rather sell but they'd be willing to rent. In either case, it's a deal for you, it's a deal for me. You should also learn, you should also have in your handy dandy trusty toolbox, you should have uh, the ability, if you find somebody that's just renting out a house, if you just find them a regular straight old tenant, you should have the ability to make at least one month's rent just for finding that too. So let's face it, like I said, we spend a lot of money on marketing. If we find somebody that wants to rent long term with an option to buy, or rent short term with an option to buy, or buy or rent, we should be able to put them into a property and make some money from it, right? So like I said, ask me, send me an email or go to realestateinvestoronline.com forward slash forum if you have any questions and I'll elaborate a little bit more. But those should all be in your toolbox. There's some great programs. If you, if you want a full-blown program, John Alexander has a renter program. Uh, Phil Grove has the, the best mortgage assignment program I've ever seen. There's another video on here. If you go back, watch through and watch it. Looks like it. Um, I just want to make this one, this, this episode, to kind of clear up what's the difference between a subject to and a mortgage assignment, how they work together, and, and, and which ones you should be doing. So, uh, if you're not a free member yet, go to www.rei-tv.com.
Facebook.com, get a free membership, you'll get videos on how to talk to people and how to do a lot of deals. And there's a hundred videos on the website. If you're a free member, you'll get a lot of extra goodies. Um, also, if you're thinking about buying a program in the industry, let me know because a lot of I'm good friends with a lot of the other uh, real estate trainers in the industry, and a lot of them will pay me a little commission if I refer someone to them to buy their program. Well, what I'd like to do, if you buy their program through me, I'll kick you cash back or do something special for you if you buy it through my link, and I'll absolutely save you money. And I can do that on almost any program in the industry because I know most of you guys. So, in any case, get your free membership, www.rei-tv.com. There's the skinny, the ins and outs of mortgage assignments and subject to deals. All that's left now is for you to go make an offer. Make some money. Have a great summer. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.